And we are recording. Um, so welcome everyone to 1559 call number eight. Um, yeah, we have probably a lighter agenda than last time. Uh, so there's only been two weeks between the calls rather than a month. Uh, so we might not last the whole time, but uh, yeah. First thing on the agenda was just status updates from the different research and implementer teams. Um, and first one there was transaction pool management. Uh, I don't know, Ansgar, did you have any updates you wanted to share? Yeah, I mean, I can give like a very brief update. Um, so basically after after the kind of this preliminary write-up uh, from, from last time, um, we kind of took took a step back. back. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm the main one in, in the team currently working on this, but then we also, we, for example, we had a call with um, Martin from Geth uh, earlier this week, and we went through some of the details of the current Geth implementation just to check if our, like, um, well, I think I have some camera issues, whatever. Um, uh, if if, if, if um, some, our assumptions were basically um, good, and, and it seems like we, we actually kind of we're a little bit off on, on, on some of the small details. So for example, it turns out for the miner, there's actually like some uh, significant rebuilding of the sorting already ongoing after every single block. And so it seems like that, that's less of an issue now for 159 to just basically also use the, use a similar mechanism. So, so it seems like basically it's a little bit, probably a little bit more optimistic or a little bit simpler than it looked uh, two weeks ago. But, but yeah, uh, going forward, so the idea is if the next call is only is, ends up being in a month or so, I would hope to, to basically have a full write-up, including some maybe some some simulation work and so on, done on, on like a, a proposal for, for how to do the sorting. And, it, and I think a lot, last time you, you were saying um, that it all looks like this should be very doable. And I, I would like preliminarily agree that it seems like some details are still to be determined, but it should all should not be like sorting should not be an issue going forward basically. that's really good news um yeah thanks yeah and it's great that like yeah the get team is already or the get code base already resorts every block for miners that's that's really good news yeah um so cool. along with, oh, go ahead. Um, with eviction so what are your current thoughts there ansgar oh yeah sure so so i, I mentioned the kind of the um the mining, um, because that's where, where where there seems like we were a little bit off on on, on the exact um, details of get. Although to be fair, like we, we again we talked with Martin, he's more of an expert on the mempool side of things. We uh, also like uh, want to want to uh, reach out to the uh, the people within the get team who are more like um, responsible for the mining side. So so so, but 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 but, but I, I, I'm reasonably confident that this is actually now 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 very um, correct. Um, yeah, on, on the eviction side, I. I think like uh, basically the only change for now, like that I'm that I had so far was that I, I think I'm a little bit um, like more optimistic on just basically using a very simple heuristic that might be very inaccurate, but like just precise enough. So we like because again for mining, it's really just important that the top end of the mempool st stays like stays very precise, and then if at the low end there's like some. Some eviction that's not like, not not like ideal ordering wise that doesn't really matter so you can get away with like very very efficient implementations like only resorting once every so often and so on so so i think uh, the, the, the the i think the main focus on the eviction side really will be testing it like under a huge variety of different uh, different base fee behaviors just to make sure that under all of those it, it hits some some minimum stability basically this, this yeah what's the what heuristics the, what, the, what are some uh, heuristics that you're thinking of um, well, again, something basically where it's, where it's like a very simple way of calculating some some expected um, future um, um, effective mine up, mining tips. So, for example, you take the current base fee and then you take, um, for example, historically, you, you always maybe the mempool always keeps track of the of the um, uh, variability there with, with, within the last, I don't know, 24 hours or something. Or there could, could be a different approach. But then, then you just do like a very simple, so for example, you just do like 50% of the current uh, base fee plus like, 25% of one sigma above and one sigma below basically just 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 to give you like some some idea right again that, that that might be as simple as that sounds like that might already be good enough that you have like it's not just the current base fee but you also like take into account like a, a, a higher one and a lower one or something and then you just update that maybe even just once every so and so many blocks um and, and and as long as you can do that efficiently and as long as basically that is good enough that that like on the high end your sorting is never is, is still absolutely like perfectly precise um 
but, but again, I, I'm, I'm, I, right now I'm not confident enough that this this would work already. But but that's basically that's that's that would be like currently my, one of my candidates for like a very simple heuristic that might be efficient but still good enough. Yeah, if that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah. Um. Cool. Anything else on the transaction pool management? Okay. Um. Next up, uh, Abdel, do you want to give a quick update on the large state testnet generator and where we're at? Okay, yes. Uh, so we currently um, have set up the new testnet. So this will be a proof of work uh, testnet. And the goal is to have uh, a state comparable to mainnet. So, so far we have uh, generated uh, 100 million accounts. And we are now uh, uh, using a smart contract and we uh, aim to generate 100 million entries in this smart contract. And uh, yeah, when this will be ready, we will share the URL of the different nodes and the block explorer and the EdSat uh, so that other clients can think of this new uh, testnet. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So we have four nodes running and the generator is still running. And I will share everything when it will be ready. That's it. Cool. Yeah, and I think for that, once we have it up in, uh, once we have you know the testnet up and running on Beisu and then we get Nethermind and get syncing to it, I think we should probably just like schedule the time to then spam it with a ton of transaction yeah. and gather metrics from all three clients. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can gather metrics and it doesn't, you know, just fall over. Uh, but if hmm. it falls over, we fix it, try again. Uh, but I think, yeah, if, if we have at least one or a few shots of like saying, look, we spammed the test net for, you know, two hours with transactions and like the node stood up, I think that's like more than the worst case we'd see on mainnet because in two hours, the base you would probably go up like, you know, a hundred thousand X or a million X. And, and it's just not realistic to even do such an attack. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hi, it's Ramil. I just joined it. Joined it. Sorry for being late. No worries. Um, cool. Any thoughts, comments on on uh, the testnet? No, I think it will be important to make sure that every single node is publishing transaction from their own respective transaction pools. So we know that we cannot not only consume the transaction load, but also that every single one can generate them. Yeah, so we have we set a very low difficulty, so everyone can be a miner on this testnet. So oh no, so not even uh, so minor one thing, but also that uh, oh, okay. the client can be a yeah. source of broadcast for the yeah, transactions. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I think I think the tool Abdel, I, I hope I'm getting yeah, it. It is client agnostic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can use it on. Uh, every client so cool. yeah. so yeah so maybe when we schedule the things like every client can kind of spam the network you know for yeah. yeah yeah we've been using uh, your tool already for uh, for spamming the network when we were working with Bezu network on this uh, current solution so uh, we were pushing transactions to test that problem okay. that was recorded before and it's all fine and we can broadcast nice it. nice nice and yeah, I will update also the the web front end to add the list of uh, the different nodes and the, the type of the node. And I will add, uh, uh, if you give me some uh, URL of Nethermind nodes, I will add them to the front end so that the user can choose to which node to send the transaction. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. Cool, so yeah, I suspect, yeah, I guess, I suspect we'll probably have the testnet filled up, you know, sometime over the holiday. So early January, we should be able to, you know, share the information and then it might take, you know, a week or something for people to sync to the testnet because um, it's, it's big. Uh, and then, yeah, sometime in January, we can probably run this kind of spamming test. Um, cool. Any other thoughts, questions on that? Um, Next thing on the agenda, I think I just copied this over by mistake, but like EIP 2718, I think we should wait until after this testnet thing is done uh, and and then add 2718 support to all the specs. Uh, it won't change anything for performance, but at least like we'll get the actual uh, testnet data before we, we have everybody changing their specs. Does that still make sense for people? 
Yeah, sure. We still want to run some transaction spamming after adding it, but yeah, should, yeah, just a formality. Yeah, cool. Um, Does it, do people, do people yeah. in here have a preference for if, or feelings about SSZ versus RLP, since it's almost certainly going to come up again? No preference. Oh, sorry, I couldn't find the mute button. The only thing I guess uh, is on all, the last all core devs, we talked about maybe doing SSZ as the dev P2P layer first and then bringing it to consensus. So I don't have like a strong opinion, but I, I wouldn't want to like uh, go against, you know, the rest of like all core devs on like having SSZ in 1559. Um, yeah, if that's going to be a blocker to. Oh, actually, sorry. As for S four EP one five five nine, obviously, I would like to keep it as separated from other things that we are adding as possible. So, um, generally, adding to seven eighteen and adding SSZ, adding SSZ itself may add something like two months delay to EP one five five nine. So, so maybe for that reason, I have strong preference for RLP. I saw that you were talking about two seven eighteen in general, but. Uh, yeah, if 2.7.18 is bundled with 1.5.5.9, like it has to be with 1.5.5.9, then I have strong preference for LP. I generally have a preference not to bundle EP 1.5.5.9 with 2.7.18. Wait, you, you want uh, 1.5.5.9 without 2.7.18? Ideally, yes. Even though 2.7.18 is going in Berlin? As I say, I would like to keep uh, EP1559 separate from the Berlin discussion. Berlin discussion can be delayed massively. I mean, it's, it keeps being delayed. I want to keep EP1559 totally separate, if possible. I mean, uh, obviously, if you uh, have the Kubernetes already deployed, then it will be. Yeah, better. okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. So it's, I'm like 98% sure uh, 2718 is going to make it into Berlin. Um, and so, which means that we'll want uh, 1559 to be 2718. And if 1559 is 2718, then we have to decide whether we're going to do what we said in court devs, which is talk about SSE again after Berlin. <laughs> and it's gonna, that means that discussion is going to be around 1559. I would generally target EP 1559 before Berlin. And this conversation, I would keep it like we don't have to think about Berlin because Berlin might be delayed. I mean, I, I see what's happening there. And there is uh, every court of call, we are adding one or two issues that are highly contentious recently, like SSERLP is, uh, it will take time. The 2718, it will take time. And people are not on board and they don't feel like there is so much of a push on Berlin, so I would just uh, keep it separate. I mean, uh, on the Berlin calls, like all core devs, I'll be pushing for Berlin to happen as fast as possible. On the EP1559 calls, I would uh, aim at pushing for EP1559 to happen as fast as possible. Um, and if both of those attempts are successful, we can come very happily together with everything in place. But I wouldn't like them to wait for each other. So I think- I see. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. I, I suspect that like we're we're coming towards the end of Berlin, and there's like a very high probability that it's ready to ship, you know, before fifteen fifty nine. That might be wrong, but assuming assuming it's not, I think then the like path of least resistance is adding twenty seven eighteen for fifteen fifty nine, because we we'll already have twenty seven eighteen in the code bases to handle twenty nine thirty, uh, and not doing SSZ because I think for SSZ. Like Peter uh, from Get's uh, point last call was, we should probably do it on Dev P2P. We're going to find bugs if we do it at the, you know, networking layer. We're going to fix those bugs. That'll take six months, nine months, and then you know maybe like once that is done, we're ready to actually move it into the protocol or consensus layer. Um, and I think that's I think that's fine. Uh, so I yeah. And if for some reason you know there is a decision made on all core devs that we switch everything to SSZ now, then like. You know, we'll have to do it for 1559, but I wouldn't want, I don't want to take like the path that's like opposed to all core devs. Like if everybody's switching to SSZ, you don't want to be like RLP and then slow things down and, and vice versa. I don't want to slow 1559 down because we want to do it. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, okay. so when, when I say there is no preference for SSZ RLP, it's because I know that we already have it, right? But I also know that uh, implementing SSZ and understanding it and testing it um, took me proper time. I mean, uh, it, it was not a trivial task. And I think that there is no chance it will be faster than like a few weeks on, on, on GEF side to properly test it and implement it into the code base. Even if you have libraries for it, I mean, okay, unless, unless you, I, I'm, maybe I'm not thinking about the fact that Prism has the Go library for SSZ and it might be more general, like because our approach was a bit more like optimize and make it not so reusable. So it might be that the Prism library is very reusable. Um, Matt, I was under the impression that you were currently working like with the guest team together on 2718. Could you maybe give like a very brief summary of like, what your take there is? What what do you think? What's what's the timeline there? What what how, how does that side look? <laughs> I mean, I feel like Berlin is locked in. It's just a matter of getting the client to test that's tested and decide on a fork block. I really think this is going to happen in the next three months which I believe is still going to be far ahead of 1559. Yeah. I think the original point for the question though was just discussing like we decided to go with RLP over SSE for the Berlin hard fork. And this is a discussion that is going to come back up after Berlin because it is a desirable thing uh, to have SSE in the protocol. and. Unfortunately, the more things that we add in that relies on RLP, the more complicated it may be to do SSE at some point. Oh how how like how much of lock in would, would a decision for one five on the one five nine side for RLP versus SSCB? So let's say we go with RLP for now, but then it turns out that mainnet will already like will, will basically want us to or will want one five five nine to, to to arrive with SSE instead. Like how 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 much of a delay would that cause on the one five five nine side? I yeah, I don't really have a good feel for no. what and like I've what it would take to like, like, you know transition fifteen fifty nine to like from an RLP to SSC. I think that generally we have complete control over these things in the protocol. The one thing that we are introducing as like an external API is how we sign 1559 transactions. So if we sign those with the RLP and it, and by switch to SSE, that means we also want to change how we sign, then that's something that would be very difficult to change because we would already start having wallets and external providers adopting that, that signing mechanism. So when you when you say SSZ, you mean even serializing transaction objects with SSZ? But it's Ser yeah, serializing, serializing transaction right? objects and Turn using the merkleization functionality to create the roots in the block. Oh, that's a, that's a very big change. It's a big change because it's it is. affects the like all the web free components, all the smart contracts. This this will be like a massive delay if we if we go for it for and the you know now we already have a, a method of expressing keep 1559 transactions in a traditional sense with just like two additional fields and i feel like this change is far far from being uh, significant for adapting the current processes so yeah yeah like ssz would be one thing that would probably delay E1559 the most from the current state of things. Yeah, so I think I, I would very much agree in the sense that I think 159 should not try to to basically be be taken as an opportunity to also push ahead other changes with together with it. So there's no reason why 159 should also try to push ahead as a C, right? If if it's ready and um, SSE is not, then uh, yeah, of course, we, we that, that, that shouldn't be part of it. Uh, the, we are in the unfortunate uh, kind of position, of course, to, to, to have to make basically like preliminary decisions on, on what we assume mainnet will expect from 159 once it's ready. Um, and so I don't know, I, I think I think we basically have to try to, to keep like the effort minimal that it would kind of 
to take either way to 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 to, to walk back on on this decision if it if it turns out that we made in, incorrect assumptions. So I don't know. For example, for me right now, seems like the max the the maximum likelihood situation would be that we arrive after twenty seven eighteen, but before SSC. But of course, could be could be either way. Could be like that we arrive before even twenty seven eighteen. I don't know. Seems unlikely, but but possible. Or even after SSC again. And 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 in all cases, of course, if that delays one five nine by months. That's not a good place to be. So yeah, I, I, I unfortunately don't really have have a good solution. But but uh, yeah, that, that is important to kind of keep. In mind. So the reason this keeps coming up is because while I agree with uh, I forget who just said it uh, that it's better to not bundle things like get SSZ in first and then switch transactions over to it. Um, historically, that has never worked with Ethereum that I know of. Um, the problem is is there is a, a subset of the core devs who do not like including changes unless they are needed for something. And so adding SSZ before SSZ is needed, there's a good chance that means we'll never get SSZ in. And SSZ is, by itself gives us a lot of big wins down the road, which we'd, we'd like to have. But we can't get that in until we have something to put it in with. And so no matter what, I think that if we want SSZ to go in eventually, it has to bundle with something. And yeah, to I stress the point that my client made, the longer we wait, the more painful it will be to, to do that because we'll have more and more stuff, uh, particularly more and more things that are being signed by third party tools. And I guess before I feel like that's kind of a core devs discussion though, because there's not just 1559 involved here, right? Like for example, there's account abstraction. Ice. Is the other one right yeah. like so so there's like this meta problem of like yeah where's the line for ssz where do we want it to be and for sure wherever we draw that line is going to slow down every other feature by like i don't know call it three months optimistically right and and but but i don't yeah i i don't think like we can do much at the 1559 level to change that right like we can say you know on the core devs call, this is the stuff we maybe want before, or this is the stuff we absolutely don't want before because you know it'll be such a big piece of technical debt to to deal with that it's it's not worth it. Um, yeah, but because it, yeah, it just feels like there's there's so many things that are coming in that might touch that that we we probably want a a higher level solution than just do we do fifteen fifty nine or this eap with SSZ or not. Yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm okay with not, not discussing it here. It sounds like the, the gist I got is that people are very hesitant on anything that will delay 1559. And I generally share that sentiment and, and definitely appreciate it. Yeah. Um, just my perspective from trying to deal with some of these things. And I know this is just coming from an opinion place, not from like a knowledge or a fact place. Um, but that there probably will be something that needs to do what you're saying, Micah, but it probably shouldn't be 1559. To do what exactly? Uh, to put the, we need SSC for this. Oh, There'll probably be something where we kind of have to decide that we need it, even though technically we could maybe not need it. The eight to merge. Yeah, but the but 1559 would shouldn't be the one to do that. But we it is a good idea to be thinking about what should be in the down the line. Yeah. But let's let's keep uh, it then on the all core devs. Like yeah. Yeah. here our goal should be to deliver EP1559. And I think the best thing that we can do is to ensure that it's uh, ready and tested for yeah. any of those scenarios, like whether it's with 2718 or without, whether it's with SSZ or without. And we have one solution that we're testing without those changes. And it means that we can uh, move it all the way to the end where we have a ready test that we've all the clients saying, we are capable of handling keep 1559. And this is the spec that we are working with. So the um, people who build tools can already start adjusting their tools and we can, uh, we can show them also like two alternative paths that uh, here is the simple path now, this is how you have to adjust the tools and these are the alternative paths. Uh, pay attention to what happens to 2718, pay attention to what happens to SSZ because maybe you'll have to adjust those tools a bit, a bit more depending on whether those go before 
but people will be more prepared. They will already start looking at it, uh, implementing first version. And I think overall, everything will go together faster. Yeah, that makes sense. So tabling the encoding discussion for now. Um, was there, uh, I guess, Barnabé, uh, Thomas, uh, and anyone else, do, or Ramil, do any of you have updates you wanted to share? So they, for, because uh, I think that we're planning the next call for 14th of January. So I spoke to uh, Michal a lot recently, and he was working on this analysis of the uh, potential attack scenarios when you like uh, not really attack on the network in general, but just the attacks where you uh, slightly modify the base fee. And this is because we are exploring like the, the cost of manipulating the markets if you introduce the gas markets to the equation. And here's the lots of results already calculated with various different uh, network parameters, uh, but was not ready yet to share it today, but he's very confident about sharing it on the 14th. So, so we'll be able to look at this uh, Jupyter notebook uh, numbers and all these charts and, uh, and show you actually how it behaves when you want to push the prices down or push the prices up. That's really cool. Yeah, looking forward to seeing that. Um, um, uh, I, I would like to share an update about pull request uh, in the get. So we reviewed with the comments uh, and um, uh, yeah, from uh, Abdel Hamid, and uh, we are going to start working on it on it on Monday. Cool, that's great. Um, and I think yeah, once uh, uh, I guess once those are addressed, it, it might make sense to get like a, a more you know thorough review from the Get team. I know that like uh, basically the Quilt team has has shared it with them, and but I think once we have the code in a spot where like it's up to date with the latest spec. Um, it, yeah, it, it, it'll be valuable to get their their thoughts. And I think one one thing uh, I believe Joseph you shared this with me uh, was that uh, the Get team would like to see it kind of split up between the consensus changes and everything else. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To if if fifteen fifty nine could be um, yes, um, phased in two phases. Yeah, one with consensus, just the consensus changes, and then the second one where the mempool changes and, you know, other well, non-consensus changes would be. That was a yeah. suggestion from Martin. Yeah, just, just to clarify, of course, and and, 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 and of course, that, that that's what, what you were saying as well, just, but just to, just to clarify. So, so it's not, not of course, about like, like an actual two-phase approach, um, but it really just is like a logical stru structural split into two PRs. So they still would have to, to arrive at the same time um, and are dependent on each other, but, but, um, uh, but yeah. I guess Ramil, what's like the best, you know, does it make sense for you to do that now? Do you want to rebate, do you want to like address all of like the spec level comments first? Um, yeah, I think whatever you think is best to, to get to that spot. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, so we will uh, update to the uh, latest spec uh, yeah. version again, yeah, and uh, yeah. Okay, and then yeah, we can look at splitting yet into into two PRs. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's not clear for me for now on hundred percent how to implement that splitting, uh, but I think we can discuss it later on the uh, chat. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, anyone else had updates they wanted to share? I just shared on the chat. A uh, paper that uh, my co-author has presented uh, in a workshop recently. It's uh, it's very preliminary work, but it's kind of looking at uh, 1559 as a dynamical system. So trying to get some ideas on how fast it converges, what are the, let's say, guarantees that we can find. And uh, perhaps using that as a springboard to look at the more control theoretic questions of, uh, well, how fast should the updates happen? Uh, I know, Tim, you've sent out a call to uh, people who might be interested, and I, I think this work might be interesting to them as well. 
And what I discussed also two weeks ago is a follow-up to Michel's uh, notebook on the transition. I have a pretty final draft, uh, just getting it a last review, and I'll be ready to share it uh, either end of this week or next, next week. Nice. Cool. Anyone else have updates? Um, if not, I'll just kind of share my screen real quick to go over the checklist, but I think we've covered a lot of it uh, already. Um, so just at a high level, uh, in terms of implementations, uh, you know, same teams are working on it. Uh, open Ethereum, worth noting that they have a job posting out to hire somebody full-time to work on 1559. So if you're a Rust developer and you're interested in working on 1559, please apply uh, to, it's a posting through Gnosis, but to work directly on Open Ethereum. Um, aside from that, uh, so just in terms of the open issues, uh, denial of service risk, uh, actually I, I've been thinking about the DOS risk more and I suspect that 1559 might make things better and not worse. And one of the reasons for this is that today on the network, um, if you if you just spam the network, your cost is constant for doing so. Like you, and if you're like a mi miner deciding to DOS the network, you're, you know you can include your transactions kind of for free in your blocks. Um, whereas under 1559, what's nice is like even if you were to spam the network and aim to not increase the base fee to keep blocks just 100% full. Um, the rest of the demand for the network will, will, will mean the base fee increases. And that means your attack will get more expensive over time, um, which is a property we don't have today. And also it, it kind of blocks that whole of like miners being able to, to DOS the network for free. Um, so coupled with like stuff like 2929 and, you know, just clients being generally more resilient towards uh, like the large states, I think like it's not as big of a risk as 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 it might have been uh, um, thought to be. Um, so yeah, that's just quick update there. It's not formalized at all, but it's just like my intuition of how it would play out. Yeah, so Tim, it's uh, exactly what uh, what Miha was working on. He was analyzing the cost of attack when you want to spam and um, make the network uh, make the blocks uh, filled by just publishing transactions with. Uh, very expensive transactions and obviously very quickly uh, all the rest of the network stops including their transactions and you're the only one who has to pay for that um, and like today just just to share some of the results that we've seen like the raising base fee from 50 to 500 um, required some like uh, pretty solid uh, participation of the miners, like at levels of around 40 to 48% of total mining uh, capacity. And it was with some, some ranges of success ratio, like between 0, 0.1 and 0, 0.2. So 20% of success with cost of around half a million dollars uh, for 10 times uh, increase in gas prices. So yeah, they, they, Pushing, pushing it up was uh, quite inefficient, quite expensive. Um, but also like it would be great to see how the network behaves if miners actually do not participate in this kind of attack, but people actually push the transactions. Yeah, looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, I think, I think this was like, I guess for me, the biggest showstopper potentially for 1559. And, and I feel like we're heading to a spot where it's, it's not a major issue anymore, which is great. Um, the, so transaction pool management, we already covered this. Uh, so I, you know, we're working on a solution. I think we should be good there. The base fee update rule. Uh, so like Barnabé just said, I've been reaching out to different people to see if we can improve on it. I don't think this is a blocker for 1559. So worst case, we just ship it with the current update rule. And if somebody if it takes a year for somebody to spend time to come up with something better, we'll update it in a future hard fork or when we go on E2, but it's not a, a blocker. Um, in terms of testing, we haven't made a ton of progress there, but I think it'll kind of resume once 1559 kind of is in more of the all core devs process rather than this, this sidetrack. Uh, but, and, and we wrote, Abdel, I say we, but Abdel wrote uh, a couple of heaps for the JSON RPC spec and, you know, there's more to do. It's not rocket science. It's just work we have to do, but uh, I don't think there's a ton of value in doing it now because of, uh, yeah, just how early it is. 
Um, and in terms of test nets, uh, basically, I think we're combining these last two into one uh, that were the, the last two things we haven't tested. So just like a multi-client proof of work test net and then a large state test net. So if we can, we can get the two of these done, uh, that'll be great. Um, and it feels like in terms of R&D, you know, there's a lot more stuff that's going to be coming, but I, I feel like Tim Roughgarden's analysis was like the last big blocker that we had. Um, and now, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident we've, we've done more analysis of 1559 than probably any change that's, you know, gone onto the network. Um, and they all, you know, modulo some small issues, everything seems pretty positive. Um, and finally, just in terms of community outreach, uh, we've been a bit slow of, of doing another kind of round of, of feedback. I think personally, I would do like maybe a more aggressive round of like reaching out to projects once we have another test net that's like more usable and that we can point people to and and, and have some documentation for it. Um, yeah, because in the meantime, it feels like every, the main thing people were asking us on, on these calls was like, when can I try it out? How can I try it out? So. Um, I would just wait uh, another few months until we uh, we have something a bit more uh, stable that we can share. And uh, yeah, that was the last thing on the agenda. Um, the next call I had tentatively put January 14th because I think it's, yeah, we have an all core devs call on the week of the 8th. So it's, it's the off week from that. Um, does that generally make sense for people? Yes. Cool. Anything else anyone wanted to discuss or bring up? Okay. Well, yeah. Thanks for making the time, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.